what's going on guys welcome back to come on keeping it real well it's monday morning so happy monday let's get it today is another day closer to our goals let's go and boy look at here i got a lot of goals so it's been a productive weekend it was hot it was hot this weekend boy i was sweating my booyaka cow but we got a lot done i ended up uh doing a lot of weed eating and cutting the grass there on the mountain and let me tell you i got a lot more grass than i thought i did i got to cutting and next thing you know i was still cutting and cutting and cutting and it looks amazing um that video will probably be coming out i'd say probably this next weekend here um i might be able to get it out thursday or friday i still got a couple of things that i got to get done um, i started working on cleaning out all the canopies and stuff around the cabin and plus i still have to uh, fix the temporary canopy there where the water bellies it in after all the rain and stuff and plus i have another canopy there for the tractor that i need to be put up so once i finish all of that i'll put that video out but man the yard is looking amazing it is probably the best that it's looked since i've owned it so far it's amazing what cutting the grass and doing a little weed eating will do that and i also got into redoing my kitchen um actually had a friend come over and help me out with uh, organizing and stuff the kitchen because i don't really cook a ton there like i like to i typically like to cook every single day but i just don't have a good functioning kitchen it's all just temporary tables and stuff like that little fold up plastic tables and it seems like there's no storage it gets cluttered up every time i try to even make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich it seems like the kitchen's messed up so I needed to do something about that. So they came over and helped me get all organized and stuff. And what that ended up doing is uh, inspiring a total kitchen redo. I wasn't expecting to do the whole kitchen, but I actually went to go get some shelving just to have a little bit more storage for like canned goods and box foods and stuff like that. Well, when I was in the section, I had a vision and I ended up buying quite a bit of shelving, quite a bit of storage, and pretty much changed the whole kitchen. Um, reorganized it all. Nothing is the same in the kitchen. There's not one table, one thing that was in there that's the same. It's all new. That video will actually be coming out on my main channel, Come On Homesteading, uh, I believe, Tuesday. And, uh, man that ended up being a huge project um i still got a little bit more to do on there i gotta uh wash some dishes and uh put some bowls and glasses and stuff like that up but i got all the food put away i got all the major appliances and stuff set up and got the kitchen itself set up the cool thing about what i used is it's actually stuff for garages so it's not something temporary that i just bought that i'm gonna have to throw away or just waste money on when I actually build my shop, I will be able to take all of that stuff out of there whenever I redo my kitchen, when I do the remodel, and use all of that kind of shelving and stuff in the shop. So it wasn't a waste of money. <clears throat> I wasn't planning on uh, buying it right then, but it did allow me to, uh, <clears throat> sorry, throat got dry but it did allow me to go ahead and uh, get a lot better functioning kitchen. I think it's gonna work out really, really well. I also think that it will actually look good on video after I get through uh, putting some new lighting in there because I hate those fluorescent lights that I got in the kitchen. It's just way too bright, causes shadows and all that other stuff. And it kind of drowns out the color whenever I'm trying to film, which is unfortunate. So I'll put some new lighting in there and then hopefully I'll be able to start recording some Fired Up Fridays and start doing some cooking on that channel again because we officially hit a thousand subscribers. Let me put my seatbelt on. I'm on my dirt road. I'm only going uh, 10 miles per hour right now. So I know I've gotten a couple of comments about seatbelts and stuff and typically I wear my seatbelt, but when I'm on the dirt roads, I don't always wear my seatbelt. I'm not gonna lie. But when I'm on the main roads, I try to wear my seatbelt. And trust me, <laughs> this truck right here will let me know about it. But yeah, Fired Up Friday, which is a, a cooking channel that I started a while ago. 
if you're old school to this uh my original channel come on homestead and then you know about fired up fridays i started those when i first started my channel and that's basically just me cooking some good groceries and about five months ago i started a, a channel with just cooking i haven't put a lot of content on there because of what i just said um but typically i cook all the time and i haven't been able to do that here at the cabin so that was a big inspiration of why i wanted to kind of get all of that done because i'm tired of just eating sandwiches and stuff like that i like to eat a little bit healthier and a little better so kind of glad that's gotten done some of the questions i got on the uh, last video for the plans for the remodel were some pretty good ones i've had a lot of people say you know why don't you just tear it down and rebuild it it'll be so much cheaper i don't know if you know the building prices right now but i promise you that i can't build a whole nother house cheaper than what i can remodel that one that it's impossible it costs a fortune right now it will cost you a hundred thousand dollars to build an 800 square foot house from scratch right now it, it's it's crazy the remodel will definitely be cheaper it's a lot of work but i'm not worried about the work i'm never worried about the work if it's just work that's no big deal but the main reason why i won't do that is i want to i want to save the historian part of the cabin you know this world in my opinion is that tear it down build new you know toss it get rid of it you know type mentality i'm not that not that way if i could save a little bit of history save something from back in the day like that i'm going to i like personally like the style of the cabin it kind of has that old west type feel cabin it's not your standard you know cookie cutter square log type cabin you know it still has the rounded logs it has the vertical logs at the top which you never see so if I can save as much of that as possible and also make it work for whatever I need it to work for, then I'm all about it. And the addition will cost a little bit. That end up being probably the highest cost of uh, all of it is doing the addition. But I mean, doing an addition is no different than building a new house, right? Um, except for a whole lot less square footage. So as far as raising the roof, Basically, I'm gonna use the same roof trusses and stuff that's on that section of the roof right now. I'm just going to add a stub wall up. I say four foot, it might end up being five foot or six foot, I don't know. I, I haven't quite 100% decided. It's probably gonna be more around five foot. That'll give a little bit more headroom because where I'm thinking about moving the stairs going up there, I might need a little bit more headroom. So. That right there, I'm planning on milling myself. So that will just cause work and effort. And work and effort doesn't cost a dollar. You know, it'll cost a little bit on uh, blades, fuel, stuff like that. And uh, you know, they say time is money. So I guess it would cost as far as that. But I don't mind doing the work. I'd much rather do the work, make my own wood, as much of it as I can to save the money. And also for the experience, I've always wanted to kind of mill my own wood and to be able to say that a big portion of that was made right there on the property. Because what I do know about the cabin is that cabin was actually milled and made from trees off of that land. So basically that whole cabin right there is from that come on mountain to begin with. So as much of that as I can do with the cabin, to me, kind of helps keep with the tradition and uh, the authenticity of that cabin. Now, I'm definitely gonna make some changes. There's gonna be a lot of materials made, uh, used, like the rock. I will be using local rock off the property to reface where I'm doing the concrete block, which also uh, brings up another question that I was asked, <laughs> uh, what size block am I going to use? I'm gonna use eight inch block. Um, I believe it's two by sixes as far as where the vertical logs come down and catch right there with that uh, bottom seal plate right there. I believe that's a two by six. So I'm actually gonna use eight inch 
and that'll give me a little lip on each side and with the rock and everything and I'll do like a little flat shelf around should turn out pretty nice um, I shouldn't have to buy too many blocks uh, I was doing some rough estimates and counts of the blocks that I already got that I got from the 41.36 I will have to buy some but it won't be too much so yeah things are moving we got a whole lot going I believe they're getting pretty close with being done with Uber at the 41.36. Uh, I know there's a lot of progress being made over there now that the skies is returned to sunny and hot. And I'm sure uh, them over there are feeling like I was feeling this weekend. Boy, it was hot. It was breathtaking hot. But they're making up moves. I should get the tractor back by this weekend, I would think, which will allow me to uh, continue the fire pit area to finish the carport areas and also maybe here soon start on the footers for the wraparound porch so because that right there is going to be the first step getting the sawmill over to the property getting it set up so i can start milling wood on all of my downtime that way i can keep that process going and go ahead and get the uh, footers put all the way around that way i can get some true measurements and stuff and really start getting the detailed finalized game plan exactly what this is going to look like because i kind of got it in my head i might end up trying to get on the computer and use one of those digital programs and kind of sketch it out and stuff and kind of make me a game plan because with a project this big i don't want to just build it out of my head i typically build stuff out of my head but with a project this big i kind of want to lay it out just a little bit more the sun is already up I'm sure I probably just disappeared whenever I made that corner. Um, another one that I got is also a lot about uh, a lot of questions about the culverts and stuff with the creek and stuff. I don't think the camera really does it as much justice of how much water is actually running through there. I would love to get the big square concrete culverts that everybody's talking about, but man, they're expensive they're they're very very expensive and then even whenever you do do that you still got to bring in dirt you still got to bring in concrete and, and all of that so i really just don't see that being an option and to be honest with you if i put those in there the water would probably still come over the top of it eventually anyways now to do that low water bridge i will have to put some kind of piping in there so the water can get through so it doesn't just erode it up underneath uh, I just ain't figured out exactly what I'm going to use with that yet. I'm going to try to use as much scrap stuff as I can. I will get on Marketplace and Craigslist and all of that and try to get as many materials as I can for as cheap as I can. So I don't know. I haven't quite figured it out 100% yet. The brain is kind of swirling, swirling. And uh, we'll see. I also know on the phone that I'm on, I get a lot of comments. Oh, you're driving on the right side and all that. No, it's just this phone. My other phone is still broken, as you can see. I'm still waiting for my replacement phone. They actually sent it, even though, like I told y'all in my other video, I gave them the address like 12 times. And then when I looked at the UPS tracking, all they have is the town that I live in. They don't even have an address. So who knows if I'm even gonna get the phone. It's pretty frustrating. I'll actually be making some phone calls about that today and find out what's going on with that. And the fact that they would just send it to the town I live in instead of the address. When I gave the address like 12 different times. Pretty frustrating. Not happy about it. Not going to lie. But it is what it is. If that's the worst thing that happens to me today, I guess it ain't been too bad of a day. But I got to get off here. I'm getting pretty close to work now. I hope everybody has a productive productive week and until we see each other again guys come on keep it real